So why do we worry about binary anyway? You know, you'll never use it again, right? Uh, well, that's the entire hallmark of computers. Uh, everything that we do on a computer creates what we call data files. Uh, you create an image, you create a music file, you create a Word document for your English class. That is a data file. And if we look at something like, say, for example, uh, making an image. Well, an image is just a collection of colors. So if I draw a line across here, and I'm just going to, say, draw a terrible looking oval for a second, and boom. What do you know? Still looks terrible. But why is it that suddenly you can tell the difference between the black background and the blue foreground? Well, what's going on here is actually binary conversion. So if we take a look at that color, what we're actually looking at is a whole number of different, a whole slew of different numbers, but the focus I want you to really look in on is this RGB value, this RGB, red, green, blue. Now, those numbers only go from 0 to 255, so only 0 to 255, but it's through the combination of these three colors, I can change this from say a blue, notice how if we look at red, green, blue, blue seems to have the biggest number, 185. If I change that, let's drop it down to 100. Now, as soon as I hit enter, notice how all of a sudden I'm doing a much more green tone. Whereas if I say make my red really stand out, say I give that 241. Say I increase it to 241. Now I have a red. I've got a more of a salmon color going on here that I can work from. And it's throughout these combinations of ones and zeros that I get any particular image. So basically what's getting broken down is, we'll just say this tiny, imagine if you will, this is a picture. Uh, an image stored on your computer. Now as I continue to draw these things out, I'll stop right about there. Why not? I'll do one more round right down here as well. Well, all these squares I'm drawing out, these are what we call pixels. Pixels. And every single pixel just stores an RGB value to it. So say for example, this last pixel right here. If I were to draw that in, I circle, I color it in, you know, making sure to stay between the lines, right kids? If I color that in, well what's happening is the RGB value of that single pixel right now is 241 comma 128 comma 100. Well, because I have three values, so I have these three values, guess what? Each one is from 0 to 255. I can start to do the binary conversion. I can start to do what is necessary for this microprocessor to understand what changes need to happen. So suddenly something like 100, let's see off the top of my head, it's a zero there. Oh, sorry. It's a... 0, 64, uh, 32, doing this off the cuff, that's suddenly a 96, so 16, 8, 4. There. So all of that right there is the binary representation of 100. Don't double check that. Or double check that. Make sure I get it right. Otherwise, you can laugh at me and, you know, maybe extra credit. No extra credit. You can see I can continue to do this uh, with every single one of those numbers. So that's with graphics. So that's how we make all of our graphics up. But what about something a little bit more complex? What about sound? Sounds a little bit more interesting. So let's say, for example, I make a recording. I say something into a microphone. What gets produced is 
a wavelength something like this and in fact let's actually take a look at that this is audacity it's a little program that does sort of the exact same thing uh, if GIMP allowed me to do image manipulation audacity allows me to do sound manipulation so let's say for example I do a little recording for a second hello my name is Adam Gawita and this is understanding binary conversion so you see on the screen we've got a large number of just wherever I made a sound and if we zoom in on that if we take just a little bit and I'll just pick an arbitrary let's take a look at this section right here you can start to see we can start to break this down even further and I'll even do that I'll break this down even tiny amounts you can start to see every time I spoke every subtle nuance in my voice was causing the microphone to shake which in turn was causing some vibration and so if we take a look all of a sudden we can actually see the subtle sine wave going on there now let's say for example let me take this image and let me put it in GIMP for just a second so let me zoom in right here we take a look at this guy right here what's going on is every single time I spoke so right about here we're gonna just say right there right there let me shrink this down a little bit right there is getting measured that's actually what's known as my bit rate and you can see there's a little dot on every single one of these as I continue to go through now every single time I see that little tick mark what's going on is it's getting measured and so somewhere down here for example that gets measured a little lower now that goes the same way the same way we did binary conversion for graphics 0 to 255 we do the exact same thing with sound we start to go alright well if I look at this little tiny square right here if I draw it out to say the edge just ever so this is a terrible straight line let me try that again it's still pretty bad but if we draw that out versus this still terrible learn to draw uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, but if you take a look at that you can see that both of these have a uh, uh, a measurement that's slightly different well that measurement that's actually what happens on the computer side of things as time increases the number increases or decreases based on the recording and it will continue to do that so we continue to move forward and as you can see as I move over I continue to see all of a sudden the progression of just this subtle part of my sound file and once I've built all this up I get to see everything as a whole so that's actually where binary really starts to come into play not just on our word documents you know seeing an ascii characterization so i hope that gave you a little bit more clarification on why we do binary